Dean Dark is an absurd, over-the-top comedy horror adventure that is intended for older audiences. Content warnings can be found in the episode descriptions. Hello and welcome to Dean Dark, a comedy horror real play podcast loosely based on the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Starring not our usual monsters, but rather some of our favorite NPCs. My name is Jordan, and I am your host and Crypt Keeper. Hello, I'm Danger Dangers, and it is weird being on this side of things. <laughs> and I will be playing Marlo Bronte, a college of eloquence bard currently en route from the city of Windsor to the town of Stratford in order to keep Maledict from getting overwhelmed by demons. And also, I'm Danger Dangers, and I will be playing Maledict Stonecroft. A hunter ranger making the final preparations to ready the House of Mysteries from departure from Stratford. And you know, I may be your host, but I am not alone today. I also have to help me Aaron, Bailey, Ben, Daniel, Grayson, and Kendra. They will also assist me to tell this wonderful story. So everyone, please sit back and relax as we unravel the fate of what becomes of Marlow, Maledict, and our beloved Stratford while the main monster mash is away. It is just beginning to dawn. The sound of hooves is followed by an uncoordinated marching of boots. There's the sickly smell of ash in the air as it's covering this band of people. Everyone here seems to have just made it out of the thick smoke and smog now covering London, due to Dracula's new industry, no doubt. There's a man on a horse leading this ragtag band. He puts up his hand to halt the group. On his back, he has a spear, but as he lifts up his hand, you see he has a kukuri knife at his side. He turns to the rest of the group, and they all seem well-armed. More or less. They're all covered in various padded pieces of clothing with different knives and weapons of all sorts. But the one thing they seem to all have consistently is they all seem to be armed with wooden stakes. Okay, we're here. Stratford is just up ahead. If we can establish ourselves there and combine our resources with that town, we can stand a very good chance. The only issue is they are currently under siege. They are heavily inundated with the undead already, but they can help us. We just need to help them first. I know there's at least one vampire plaguing this town. If we take it out, then they will at least be free from its thrall. Up ahead is its lair. I need half of you to go in, find the vampire, and slay it. The other half is going to come with me into the town and figure out how we can best save these people. Look, I know a lot of you haven't killed any undead yet, let alone a vampire, but you have the power of numbers... There are seven of you and one of it, and day is just breaking. We have the advantage here. It should be asleep in its coffin, likely uh, in a basement or some low point of this old house. What you're going to need to do is sneak in there, locate its coffin, stake it, drag it out to the sunlight, and then destroy the coffin and then its body before it can reform. It's it's a lot. It's, it's nerve-wracking, but I've been through this before. All of you just remember... Act on instinct, get in, get out as quickly as you can, and when you're finished, meet back up with me in town. Are there any questions? And he looks to this group of this, like, ragtag individuals. They look like people from all different makes and marks from London. As he looks out to this crowd of people, the half that are going into the house, do any of them have any questions before they go in? Not necessarily a question, but one of the party members just walks up in front twirls a uh, quarter staff in a amateurish measly sort of way he like twirls it puts it on his back makes some sort of hand gesture with his hand and looks to the thing and is like we will win the day for the chosen one shall not lose and twirls the staff again and looks at the town and starts walking but he gets like three steps out and but then turns around and is like which house is it again oh uh, so you see the dark, gloomy path. It's like, it's a nice day, but like that area is really shady and dark. That's kind of like a telltale sign. There's a vampire in there. Oh, oh, OK. So so that one, uh, yeah, the yeah, second yeah. one on the left. Yeah, that then. one up there. Yeah. Don't even worry. Not a chance he beats us. Well, good. I'm I'm glad you are all confident. 
Good luck, and once again, once you're done there, meet me back in town. I wish you the best. And as these groups split and depart, one going towards the town and one going towards the house, your house, Maledict, as you see this group of amateurs walking up to your doorstep, you're filled with a sort of glee. You watch them step along through the many eyes of your bat and rat minions. And as you come back to yourself as you were getting ready for bed, one delightful thought flicks through your mind. What is it? Well, before I get there, I'm going to do a little bit of dramatic (laughs) setup myself. Yes, please do. So as this conversation is fading out and as this group is beginning to head towards the house, the camera tracks down to the ground from the perspective of a single rat that then whips around and begins speeding off towards the house. And the camera does that, like, evil dead tree vision. (laughs) and is speeding its way towards the house. And then we cut to Maledict sitting in a drawn bathtub full of blood with cucumbers over his eyes and a glass of wine in his hand. Then we cut back to the rat again, who is still speeding towards the house. We then cut back to Maledict, who is shuttering all of the curtains as the sun is beginning to rise and is heading towards his coffin. We cut back to the rat that then is making its way inside the house and going down, like a cross between the Evil Dead thing and Fraggle Rock. (laughs) And then we meet both perspectives at once as Maledict is freshly laid down in his coffin, and then the rat scampers in and runs up beside him and begins to whisper. His eyes shoot open, and then in one fluid motion, he does that classic vampire lean back up from fully horizontal to fully vertical, looks to the camera, smiles, and says, the hunt is on. So now, we're gonna hop over to what's happening in Stratford. Dan, tell me what Gonzo's up to right now. Mm -hmm. So Gonzo is in crisis mode right now. (laughs) She happened to be outside when the Necronomicon incident had gone down and saw all of the tears forming in the sky and all of the creatures spilling out. She did also witness that shortly thereafter, they all one by one sealed back up and some of the closest entities that had spilled out got siphoned back in, but not anywhere near the amount that came out. And that combined with the Dracula incident, combined with the general problems and issues that have been going on in town. She is trying to put out as many social fires, so to speak, as possible. She is maneuvering around the town at a very quick pace, trying to corral everyone inside to safety as she returns to her house, goes through her private collection, and gets out thousands of gold worth of special herbs, incenses, oils, and begins reciting to herself some old incantations as she takes a deep breath and sigh and begins the extremely long and involved process of a thing that she does not want to do, which is turning the entirety of Stratford into hallowed ground. Oh, shit. In which case... Celestials, Elementals, Fey, Fiends, and Undead Uh will be unable to pass the threshold and will be weakened within the threshold. Uh And she is desperately hoping that it won't come down to it. It is possible to make exceptions in the spell. It is unlikely given the political state of everything. And this spell will take 24 hours to prepare before it goes into effect. So she's readying herself to work through the night. Jordan and I discussed this off mic, and the radius of the hallow spell is 60 feet. In order for Gonzo to expand that radius so that it encompasses the entire town, she will need to upcast this fifth level spell to ninth level. That is beyond her capabilities, but she can put her own life force 
into casting this spell and into protecting this town, raising the level of this spell from fifth to ninth at the expense of taking on five levels of exhaustion. She's going to kill herself. Yeah, that's right above. So she is mentally doing everything she can to brace herself to essentially put herself on death's door for the sake of this town. All right. So, Gonzo, as you're working frantically, as you're taking these spice and herbs and oils out of your house and you've just been focused on this all morning, uh, fairly distracted, um, you do notice out your eye, you see some people coming into the town that you don't recognize. They kind of disperse as they walk in, but you see there's one man with a horse absolutely covered in soot and ash. This man takes his horse and goes up to a nearby fence post and ties it up. And as he's sort of scanning and looking around the town, he's wearing a cloak, but you can see underneath he is wearing city clothes and has some soot covering him and hair is a bit disheveled. You can tell that he's been kind of going through it and traveling for a bit of time in order to get here. Uh, You can see he sees you, perks up, like tries to brush off some of the soot and just debris and it's it's just rubbing it into the clothing more there's so much of it uh but kind of straightens up puts a little pep in his step and starts marching over towards you um is there anything you would like to do any way you'd like to react Gonzo is going to continue laying down the circle and doing the preparations she is going to try to waste as little time as possible and work while engaging with him So in the process of laying down the runes, putting the chalk insignias Mm -hmm. on the ground, she looks up at the man and pays him sort of half attention and says to him, if you're refugees, I'm sorry, you've come to our town at a very inopportune time. What is it that I can help you with? Oh, um, uh, I, I guess we're refugees of sort, but, um... We've also come to help. You wouldn't happen to be um, the the governess of this town, uh, Lady de Gonzola? Yes, that is correct. I I do wish that I could give you a better welcome and introduction to my town, but as I'm sure you can tell, things are a bit dire right now. So uh, what aid do you wish to lend us? Well, I know that Stratford is in very close proximity to London, and with all of the incidents falling out because of Dracula's return, not to mention the demonic incursions that have been happening, um, me and my team here, we've, we've escaped London, but we are sort of assembling a task force in order to um, collect ourselves, collect resources, and create uh, some sort of pushback, some sort of return to take back what we've lost in uh, the recent weeks. Um, can I ask what you're working on here? She takes a second to respond. Oh, uh, yes, um, this is all very technical, but I'm I'm putting down some warding to protect the town. It will take me quite a while, but give, give or take around 24 hours, um, this town should be insulated from the outside invaders. Um, I, I'm sorry, I, I can't. Are, are you the only one working on this right now? And you're encompassing the whole... I'm sorry, is this hollowed ground? Ah, it's it's very rare that I find someone with deeper knowledge of the inner workings of the church. Yes, this is... I, I am indeed trying to consecrate the ground. I we, we don't exactly have an abundance of qualified clerics within our walls, so... It comes down to me. I understand. Um, that's actually something I might be able to help with. See, uh, me and some of my team here... We have some expertise. Um, due to the the loss of Van Helsing, there's been sort of a an opening, a pocket in people focusing on hunting down vampires. And with Dracula now in full swing, I've sort of been trying to compile a team of people, if not capable, at least having the spirit for it to focus on these sort of things. So I've, I've managed to uh, collect some people that have some knowledge and some expertise. I myself have a little bit of experience working with this. If... You'd allow us. I would be more than happy to help you complete this spell and, and banish any undead, any fiends from this town and, and help build back up resources and make this place a, a stronghold in the future. I take it you're with the Bloodhunters? Not my preferred company, but 
I can't exactly afford to be picky right now. No, no, um, actually, I, um, we're, we're not affiliated with them. I just, we didn't agree on a few things, but I did pick up a little bit of knowledge, and I know a few of the people I came in here with have, uh, some expertise on setting up spells like this, so if you would have us, we would be more than willing to help you out with this. Um, I do want to ask, I've heard some strange reports about Stratford, is it? And he's going to kind of take a look around and see, even though the political situation in Stratford is kind of tense right now, I still imagine there are undead kind of going about their day to day, living their regular life as best as they can. Is that correct? Uh, I would say yes. The day to day status quo is still mostly unchanged. He's going to look up and kind of take in the environment around him. Pardon me for saying this, but this town, it's... Why are the undead so casual here? They're just walking about like regular people. It's a it's a long, complicated history. If you, if you could please take some of these supplies, continue this circle that I'm working on here, that would really... Oh, of course. And he takes it and he starts joining you in working on this ceremony. When I first came to this town, it was in crisis and they were overrun by the spawn of a local vampire lord. I similarly am formerly affiliated with the Blood Hunters, but never in any official capacity. They... The situation was complicated and difficult, and um, I was able to broker and negotiate a temporary peace, and for the last several years we have been living under a system that benefits both us and them. We have been able to negotiate with them. They simply want a place of safe harbor, so we've offered them, in exchange for money and resources, we willingly exchange our blood. And they, since hunger has been taken out of the equation, have been largely peaceful and unproblematic, and we've lived in a fragile truce ever since. We've still had events that have popped up here and there, but no different from most towns. Orlock. You leave my favorite alone. <laughs> While I don't know that this arrangement could work in a different town or environment, it seems to have worked for us. They mostly keep to the nightclub we've offered to let them overrun, and we mostly keep to the sunlight. And, Gonzo, you don't see this, but just... <laughs> it, it, his jaw is slack. I've <laughs> just dropped. Uh, but when you uh, conclude, he's just... He, you're you're not serious, are you? Giving the undead safe harbor? From what? And, 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 and nightclub? You're serious, aren't you? And she is going to stop for a moment, look him in the eyes, and say, do I seem like the kind of person who jokes? And she's going to continue with the ritual. Ah, um, well, thank you for that explanation. Uh, I will admit it is not... A lifestyle for most. However, we do have a numbers advantage. We do have an economic system that we benefit from. And it's allowed us to live at a very comfortable standard of living that we might not have been able to achieve otherwise. Well, that's um, a miraculous thing you've managed to pull off, um, Lady Day Gonzola. But with the recent events taking place, I'm sure that's not exactly something that can be maintained and... That's why you're casting this spell, am I right? I'm laying down the groundwork for this to be an emergency measure. I would really prefer, for a variety of reasons, that it not need to come to that. But I need to be ready to enact it to protect this town. If I'm honest with you, as we were marching over, there are these horrible things with multiple legs and mostly mouth and eyes and... Gorilla Peds. <laughs> I, I think if they continue going forward the same way they were, the odds are we may see more of these demon incursions appearing tomorrow. So I think it is quite pertinent that this this spell go off quickly, or else this town might be overrun. Well, I will gladly accept your help. The town might not be as hospitable towards you. We've had some issues with outsiders uh, coming through here. Wasn't a part of that. <laughs> so, don't be surprised if the townsfolk 
are not immediately receptive to more <laughs> newcomers within our borders. Understood. Uh, we will make sure we are no burden at all. I, I will assure you of that. We will do the most we can to help and not hinder what's going on here. If you don't mind me asking, what, what happened with the last batch of newcomers? No, that's okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> there were a group of interlopers. They brought a revenant into our town that I have some personal disagreements with. <laughs> as well as committed a few murders. Uh, so, oh, only a few. So while I appreciate your offer for help, allow me my healthy dose of skepticism. Understood. I assure you that is a low bar. Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we both turned away from the Blood Hunters, so I don't know if this means anything to you, but I, before starting my mission here, I took an oath, and in that oath, I have dedicated myself to protect people. I know that's just my word, but I hope that that's at least enough to start, and then I can show you with my actions. I simply ask that you not stir up trouble. That is the last thing we need when we are in crisis like this. Understood. I don't think I ever got your name. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, my name's Jonathan. I'm uh, Jonathan Harker. Of the Harker Estates. Um, very same. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> well, allow me to tentatively welcome you to Stratford, Mr. Harker. Thank you. You've given me a lot to think about. Um, now, the more of your group that can help me with this, the better. Of course. I've, um, I'm just about through my oils and herbs. I will actually go get them and uh, regroup and tell them what I've learned. I appreciate that. Things are a little tense right now, so watch your step. I will be doing everything I can to try to protect our town and maintain our fragile sense of coexistence. So I trust, after this conversation, that you will not do anything to jeopardize oh, no. <laughs> that fragile state of codependence. Trying to decide if I should have Gonzo roll an insight check here. I will roll an insight check here. <laughs> that is an 11. You look at the, the like, pleasantry and the nods on Jonathan's face, and he just goes, understood. Uh, we will not do anything to disrupt the balance of your town. And I'm going to say that the hallow spell is too important and demanding too much of her focus mm -hmm. to really look deeply into that. So she's basically going to just end it there and keep doing what she can to lay down these runes around the town, mm -hmm. largely by herself. Yeah. Hey, Jonathan said he would be back. She's not holding her breath. <laughs> you know, fair enough what Gonzo's been through. She's not expecting any wrongdoing from them, but will not be surprised if wrongdoing happens. Mm-hmm. All right, so now time for me to yo-yo back and forth in between the extremely serious and dire mentality of Gonzo and the two chuckle fucks. Yes! <laughs> Wouldn't have it any other way. I think it's a chuckle fucking maledict, to be fair. I, I consider it a chuckle fucking maledict. <laughs> and maledict is part of it. <laughs> All right. Coming away from that conversation, Jonathan's going to head back to what remains of his vampire hunters that are kind of poking around town, talking to some of the townspeople. Um, Dan, it's been long enough. Has... Marlo made it back into the proper town of Stratford. Uh, absolutely. Whether or not he's back in the nest, I'm going to leave up to you and whatever benefits you the most and screws me over the most. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Marlo would enter the town and whether or not he sees Jonathan, I can leave up to a roll from you, but he certainly does see Gonzo. Um, does he go up and talk to Gonzo at all, or does Gonzo see Marlo? Marlo is not going to approach Gonzo, but Gonzo will approach Marlo. <laughs> <laughs> Good. How I would like for this to essentially time out, she is near enough by the entrance of the nest that Marlo has to pass her to get in. <laughs> Good. As she is laying down the runes and as Marlo is heading towards the town, trying to avoid eye contact <laughs> and trying to be subtle about it, but just making it, it's very obvious he is not succeeding <laughs> at all, but 
avoiding eye contact and trying to move extra quickly to just not have a conversation. Yeah, no one wants to talk to Gonzo. Or lady. (laughs) Gonzo is going to look up and see him coming, stop for just a moment to cast a command on him. (laughs) Yes, get him! Stop. And that is a seven. Yes! Yes. Hell yeah. So Marlo will stop in his tracks as he is magically compelled to let out a deep sigh and say, what do you want? Now's not a good time for me. Now's not a good time for you. Oh, no. <laughs> Listen here, you insufferable bitch. I see you're making your way casually to the nest, to do whatever it is you do there, to socialize, hang out, cause whatever mischief, make all of their lives miserable so you're not making my life miserable. But you need to understand that in 24 hours, there will not be a nest if things happen the way that I fear they will. I have done everything I can to try to buy some time for the usual suspects to get back here and clear the air and get the town back on their side. That is not a luxury that I have anymore. All of my focus and attention will be on keeping this town safe from gestures wildly in the air. (laughs) (laughs) By default, this spell will forcibly eject all of the undead and leave them the worse for wear. I do not want to do that. I can make them an exception. I am not in a political position to be able to do that right now. So if you want your status to remain quo, oh, God, I I can't believe that it's come down to you. (laughs) (laughs) But I am going to be too busy saving all of our collective asses to be able to do this. So if you want to remain in this town, you are going to have to convince the people of this town to let you stay. Oh, shit. I would be more than willing to include an exemption for the undead into this hallowed ground. But if the town is unwilling to budge on that, then there is nothing I can do. Do I make myself clear? You understand that literally everyone hates me here. (laughs) <laughs> I am like the second, the third, the fourth most hated person in this town. <laughs> yes, I understand that. If I had any other options, I would be looking to them. I would much prefer that the people who made this mess be the ones to clean this up. But that's, again, not a luxury that I have. So do what you will or don't. I cannot afford to care anymore. I need to focus everything I've got into keeping this town safe. So I'm going to let you go. Do what you will, but just know that if you don't do this, it's going to hurt me immensely, but it's going to hurt you a hell of a lot more. And then she's going to return to laying down the circumference for the hallowed ground. All right. Dan, for this conversation to be overheard, what would you say a good... Oh, never mind. That was a net 20. Uh, (laughs) I guess I'll redact my question. Oh, no. What skill do you think... You know what? Doesn't fucking matter. Doesn't matter. (laughs) Well, I would say that these two are experts of subtlety and secrecy, Uh, and only a nat 20 (laughs) would be able to pass the threshold of that DC. Uh 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 I was going to say like a 12. Sorry. Well, Jonathan's going back and like untying his horse. He hears just the exasperated scolding of Marlo and kind of (laughs) like... Huddily looks around the corner and sees her like waggling her finger at him like a mother to this full blown vampire. And he's just going to think it to himself What is with this guy? <laughs> Why is this guy crazy? <sighs> okay. Okay. I just need to get back to my people. I just need to get back to the vampire. Just okay. Um, and he's going to regroup with uh, the half that didn't go into the house. <laughs> And he's going to say to them, 
Okay, uh, I don't know what information you all gathered, but this town, it's going to be a little harder to work with them than I thought. Apparently the undead just live here, and the people here are fine with that. I don't know if anyone's under a thrall or just crazy, or in my experience, sometimes it's both. But <laughs> we need to be careful and subtle with the waves we move here. Um, has the other group come back yet? And the other vampire hunters are just going to look at each other and be like, no, they haven't. We haven't seen them. It's been, I don't know, a while now. And he's going to be like, okay, shit, they should have come back. Um, okay, well, I'm, I'm fairly sure that vampire came from the direction of the house. Once the governess of this town has moved on with her circle past that nightclub, I need a handful of you to go in there and capture that vampire, and we need to interrogate him exactly what's going on here and what kind of spell is over these people. In the meantime, I'm going to go off and check on that group and see if they're okay. Oh, no. <laughs> when all is said and done, we will meet back here. And Jonathan's going to give one of the people in this group dimensional shackles. Essentially, what these things do is stop creatures from teleporting away. Because how do you capture a vampire if they can just poof into smoke and just vanish? Mm -hmm. So he's going to hand them to one of you and say, get these on him as fast as you can and try and get him away from crowds. I don't know where the sympathies and who is under control and who is not, but you need to be careful and be subtle. Okay. Wish me luck. I'm going to go check on the others. And I'm going to ask... Kendra's character, Faley's character, and then Grayson, pick one of your two characters that you have remaining. Uh, okay, got it. I'm going to choose my monk. <laughs> All right, Dan, please describe Marlo entering the nest. I know there's always a doorman and the signs of the door. Um, is there currently anything going on with the signs that are preventing Marlo's entry? The word Soros is mostly scrubbed out of his last name, <laughs> <laughs> but not completely. So it just says Marlo Brontessa. <laughs> <laughs> the revenant guarding that door is going to look at you, recognize you, look up at the sign, look back at you, shrug. <laughs> and step out of the way. He doesn't look like a brunt. Yeah. <laughs> he just looks at the side and goes, you know what? I don't get paid enough for this shit. Just get in there. <laughs> My business is purely technicalities. <laughs> and Marlo is going to enter uncharacteristically quiet and a little pensive. Ooh. And he makes his way inside. And as soon as he steps through the doors, he kind of half-heartedly lowers his glasses and mass hypnotizes everyone to swoon. Oh, oh. Oh. Very, very subtle. It's very so sad. subtle. <laughs> as they return to their normal way of doing things and are all just glaring at him as he makes his way to the bar before making his way to his established booth. I'm just going to put in an advance order for about five Necronies. Send them to the booth. I'm going to need a few drinks in me for what's to come. <laughs> and the zombie waiter, that's up to you. You can tell there's no bats working right now. Um, they're having a retraining on how to properly dictate receipts to proper tables. <laughs> um, oh, I wonder why. Man, we really do just ruin everything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good intentions. They way to hell. And the zombie's gonna say to you, Are you gonna pay... This time? Or should I not worry about working for a tip? <laughs> eh, to be determined. <laughs> you gotcha. Four Necronis happening. Whenever. And he's gonna just, like, very painfully, slowly shamble back to the bar. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> and the rest of you that I called on you're walking up to the front door of the nest. It goes down and there's this big, strong, undead revenant at the door. Very intimidating. I don't think you guys have really seen a force like this before. What do you guys do upon first approaching? I turn around to the group and was like, mm, there seems to be someone guarding it. I'm going to go try and sneak around to the back door to see if we can get inside that way. 
and very loudly just go clang, 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 <laughs> to try and put the back door. Excellent. Every time he walks, it's kind of like a Mega Man Legends where Mega Man walks, you hear that clang, 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 clang. What a clang. specific callback. <laughs> Real cream of the crop team that Jonathan uh, assembled. <laughs> <laughs> he really knows how to find him. Jonathan's just like, I can't really say no. I got to take what whoever's willing, you know. <laughs> Um, okay, so Ben, your character, um, please remind me of his name. His name is Mist. Mist! His real classification is a fighter, but he thinks he's the world's sneakiest and best rogue, <laughs> and he is super silent, even though he Amazing. is um, Amazing. obviously not. He's just deaf. He's just deaf! <laughs> Got that disadvantage to stealth plate mail armor. Uh, I, I'm not even gonna roll. <laughs> Everybody hears you. <laughs> they just um, watch them. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do roll an investigation check, an insight check, perceptive. However much detail you want to look at the backside of this building. Uh, he has a decent enough insight, so I'll go insight. His insight's a plus three. Okay. That's an 11, so he doesn't see jack shit, I assume. Yeah, <laughs> insight. He's like, all right, I understand how buildings work. They should have a back door. This building does not have a back door. Oh, no. <laughs> As a reminder, the nest is underground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, Miss is going to go clang, 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 clang. He thinks he's being sneaky. The Revenant is just looking at him going, the fuck is this guy <laughs> doing? He's going to go around and go, wait a minute. There's, there's nothing over here. I don't see. Well, this is, there's no back door. How dare they? And I go clang, 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 clang. Back is like, bad news. No back door. Oh my. That's the only way in or out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kendra Bailey Grayson. Uh, <laughs> uh, please remind us of your character's names and what are your plans? Maverick Foxglove. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> they are a honest to, well, maybe not honest. Uh, honest to good? No, not that either. Um... <laughs> They are, you know, a, a a capable blood hunter. And that's being generous. <laughs> <laughs> they are one of the original blood hunter factions, but decided that they were better than all of the elders in the group and said, you know, I I understand this. I I'm a prodigy. I got this. You know, I don't need your trainings and your your tutorials anymore. I'm making my own way out into the world. Goodbye, losers. <laughs> and uh, somehow got into the fold of Jonathan's crew. Basically, Jonathan's question is like, you want to kill vampires? Yeah, all right, you're on the team. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know my way around blood. Mm. That's about it. <laughs> all right, <laughs> wonderful. And then... <laughs> hey, Bailey, you want to introduce your, your wee little guy? Yeah, uh, so my name is, Te uh, I'm sorry, uh, my name is Thomas Pennington. <laughs> God damn it. He's an artificer who's uh, rather timid, but he'll do anything for his friends. In fact, he is currently holding all of their weapons and uh, rations and basically all of their gear is stacked up on top of him and he's holding them in his arms. But, but everybody's they're all his friends so hmm. why wouldn't he do what they asked of him right friends <laughs> somebody uh somebody asked a favor of him and gosh it would be rude to say no <laughs> and one thing led to another and he just kept having to do things and eventually people started calling him uh calling him one of their own so i guess i guess he was i guess that's always what he wanted to do <laughs> little baby boy sweet baby boy well i guess uh it would make sense for you to have the dimensional shackles atop your pile of equipment <laughs> yeah. all right and then we will jump over to grayson's character with the character that's uh essentially a what we would almost assume a shambling mound of equipment um <laughs> if you look on his back you'll see uh, a person roughly tied to his back uh just so that way he could keep standing up and uh we have jasper who is nearly baby bottling 
a uh, a giant decanter of bourbon. Oh no! Yeah, he wasn't even supposed to go with this group, but he heard a bar nightclub exactly. and was just <laughs> like, "Yes." Exactly. <laughs> oh, Grayson, please tell me this monk is like the master of the drunken fist. Absolutely, yeah, there it is. Yeah. So once he gets a whiff of the alcohol in the air, he immediately stands straight up. Um, I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> Does he just walk straight in? Yeah, basically. All right. <laughs> you know what? Walk in like you own the place. Say hey, why basically, not? That's that's what he's there for. Miss just sees this and is just dumbfounded and is like, well, if he could just do this, so can I? And he just like tries to like cool and like calmly collect it, like try to just walk in and not make eye contact. You know, like someone trying to sneak into a club that he's not supposed to be in. But obviously, clang, 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 clang. <laughs> as you're walking in, you and like having your head duck and trying to be as stealthy as you can, you feel this giant palm hit your chest and just clang. What? And you just see this big looming force in the door go, you, one, of, these, and points up to the sign. Aw, he's learning his articles. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh. getting better. They really had to up their training in this place. Mm -hmm. So he just looks up and goes, uh, no. Okay. And steps out of your way. Correct answer. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thanks. And Miss just planks into the nightclub. Brilliant. Maverick is going to watch this interaction and look from the Revenant and look back at the bumbling fool in plate armor. <laughs> mm, piece of cake. Let's go. And uh, is going to walk up to the Revenant and see what happens. Uh, he's going to continue to point at the sign and look at you. No dice. Let me in. He looks at the sign and he tries to find no dice. <laughs> <laughs> no dice is not one of the six names that are on there. Okay. He's going to nod and he's going to turn back to you and step out of the way and let you in. And they walk right in. Yeah. And Thomas, seeing that all of his friends have, have walked in, He's going to kind of like look side to side and hur hurriedly try to rush in after him. Um, please make a dex check to try and like sneak in there. Uh, oh, I'm enjoying these character tokens. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's Tails. <laughs> but Haley's token is literally Tails from Sonic. <laughs> yeah. oh. I love this group. But <laughs> That's a five. This big hand comes crashing down on your mound of equipment, kind of crushing you underneath a little bit. Some rings fly out. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to pick you up from this bag and raise you up to eye level and then shove you up at the sign and say, one of these. Um, I'm, st uh, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm not. And then just drop. <laughs> Crashing. <laughs> Brilliant. So the three of you very uh, skillfully, deftly make your way into the nest. And, and you see it. You see it. You feel the pumping beats. You see the giant hearts pumping away on the wall. You see the neon lights. And this place is full of the undead just going about their business, having a great time. Maybe slightly less of a great time now that Marlo showed up, but um, you can see that everyone's very casual in here. For those of you that would remember, you do have that message in the back of your head of just basically Jonathan saying, don't stir up trouble, just get in, capture that vampire, get out to a place where no one will notice. So it's up to you guys to kind of look around this nightclub and see if you can spot him. So the objective is to find Marlo, bag him, and get out as discreetly as possible. Yes. Mavic is going to try to get eyes on if there actually is another exit besides the front door. <laughs> um, please make a perception or investigation check. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. It's in that one. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. This place would not pass 
fire safety. There are no little cellar windows out of this place. Those have been bricked up long ago to prevent any sunlight from getting in. This is a solid one way in, one way out box. This is 1880X. People died in building fires all the time. <laughs> uh, and OSHA's American. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Also, there a lot of them are vampires. Vampires don't really die by fire. Oh yes, they do. <laughs> oh, oh shit. Oh yeah. I thought it was sun like steaks and garlic. And also fire. Granted, in order to not completely screw over Janae when I made Carmilla, I did not give her vulnerability to fire, but typically vampires are vulnerable to both radiant and fire oh, damage. Yeah. <laughs> the mo you know. Thomas is looking at this place. He's like, uh, oh man, this is so unsafe for vampires specifically. If I were just to put running water outside the front door, everyone would be trapped. (laughs) (laughs) Just simply continuing his momentum, Jasper is going to be wandering his way, following his nose to uh, the bar. Perfect. So you wander around and you find your way to the bar through bleary, drunken eyes, seeing stars as you go. Ben, what does Mist do? All right. So Mist is going to do like the typical rogue thing. Go into a corner and just stand there mysteriously because, you know, that he thinks that's what rogues do. So he just goes into the corner, stands there mysteriously, you know, trying to get an eye on everything, but also just to to stand there, just wait until someone to come up to him and ask him about his backstory. Oh my God. I love him. The best of the best, guys. Um, How much armor is Mist wearing? Is he like full head to toe? He is in head to toe, full plate armor. Brilliant. Just the loudest mother effer you can hear. Um, Your character doesn't know this, but everyone else in this club just assumes you're in animated armor. (laughs) Okay. And they're like, you know, they like to stand in corners. I guess that's just how that guy vibes. All right. (laughs) Thomas is like terrified right now. There are so many things going on. Uh, he, he's just honestly more overwhelmed than anything, and he's trying to stick with everybody, but he immediately lost track of <laughs> two of the three of his friends that walked in. <laughs> so he, he just latched on to the one person that's closest to the door. <laughs> and that's me. He's like, he's like <laughs> hiding right behind. Yeah, you're glued to the Maverick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what is the Maverick going to do? Uh, you see this full nightclub you see it's full of foul undead uh they're sitting around drinking talking a couple of them are dancing up on the stage but then you see up in the far walls of this nightclub there's some there's a raised balcony area with some booths please roll a perception check for me uh dirty 20 dirty 20 you see him you see marlo bronte just kind of sitting there i feel like at this point He's kind of a bummer vibe. Poor Marlo. <laughs> oh. So Maverick sees him and their first instinct is to try to sneak up against a wall to like get out of view, but they feel a tug behind them and <laughs> they look behind and they see this little human. Yeah, yeah, definitely a human. (laughs) He is a human. A bag with legs. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Attached onto him like a baby elephant on a pant loop. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But you do see he has the dimensional shackles atop the backpack. They're going to look at the shackles and then look at Thomas and say to them, if you don't want to get in the way, stay close and stay behind. And uh, he's gonna start walking over to this wall to try to keep an eye on on dear Marlo. <laughs> yeah. Thomas is gonna be like, that's entirely what I was intending to do. <laughs> uh, Thomas, do you follow Maverick? 100%. All right, glued. I do wanna ask if there's a way to like make make like hand signals and like try to find eyes on the other team members. Roll performance and I'll have the other two roll Perception. Amazing. I have a zero in performance. Perfect. <laughs> oh, uh, 21. Cool. I rolled a seven. Mm. I'm not much for the performance type. That's a 19 for perception. 
Very good. Okay, so Maverick, you're out there and you're like flashing these hand signals. They're not as subtle as you think, but your other two companions, Mist, has been scanning for attention this entire time, looking for anyone asking for that backstory and sees you kind of focusing on them. Pinpoints noted. Jasper, as you're waiting there for your drink, you do notice Maverick behind you. Uh, but what are you also doing at this time? So he, of course, walked in with his decanter, but he's waiting for a moment that the bartender's not paying attention. And his plan was to actually grab a tray, fill it with drinks, and start walking around. Interesting. Okay, uh, okay. Roll sleight of hand. Uh, it is a 15. Ever since the bartender noted that Marlo was in the building, really just kind of averted their eyes to the whole situation. And you are free to walk around with this tray of drinks. Smart. Fantastic. Uh, he'll kind of walk by. Uh, actually, yeah, he's he also remembers that he's supposed to be looking for someone. Yeah, I'll let you do a, a perception check. Okay. Plus 221. In your very creative undercover, carrying the trays, you're able to pinpoint there's this guy, this powerful like force of dark energy up by himself, sitting alone. Very obvious that is a full-blown vampire right there. There are no other true vampires in this building. Okay, he's gonna have the tray of drinks, kind of make eye contact with his two other party members that are not being super subtle. <laughs> I'll say that he'll see the one in the corner and ignores him. <laughs> and uh, he'll just kind of like um, motion to Thomas for the shackles. Mm. Yes, good. Good, good, good. Yes, of course, friend. <laughs> <laughs> takes off this giant backpack, sticks his entire arm into it, ruffles around a little bit, and pulls out the shackles and hands them to you. Uh, Miss, you're in the back corner. You've waited a little while. No one seems to be walking up to you, and it looks like your group is doing something. I am going to try and, like, nonchalantly, like, you know, I was really standing there because I was surveying the whole room. Yeah. So I'm going to just act natural, just, like, look and think, you know what, I could use a drink and just <laughs> slowly and, like... Like, I don't care, but inside my feelings are deeply hurt. <laughs> He's a Brilliant. sensitive boy. All right. Yeah. And just go clang, clang, clang back to where the rest of the group is and uh, be like, so I was scoping the place out and I think I found our guy. Uh, how boring. <laughs> Thomas, who was not looking around that much, who was just kind of scared of the whole place, is like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Uh, great, great on you for finding him. Uh. <laughs> well, he wasn't making himself hidden. He's at, he's up in the top all alone. Pretty much the one standout guy in a way, assumed to be the, I don't know, very important people boost. I don't know. I guess this time it's Viv's very important vampires. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, seeing where you're referring to, sees that and he just kind of and like holds on to his bag a little tighter. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Up in the Viv's area, uh, how's Marlo doing? What's he thinking? What's he up to? Marlo is going to once again make the whole club swoon. Ooh. And then after doing so, we'll just kind of mutter to himself. The whole sense of impending doom thing really takes the luster out of it. <laughs> um, I would like Marlo Bronte to roll a perception check. Yeah, does he also make us swoon? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If you want to roll opposed, uh... It's a charisma saving throw, DC 24. No, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Don't need to. <laughs> they just kind of go, ah, uh, and then it's back to normal. It's nothing, actually. There is no mechanical benefit to it, nor is there really a flavor benefit to it. Everyone hates it when he does that. <laughs> it's a power move. It's just him being a shit. Uh, 24, by the way, on that perception. Damn, he's hot. And the guy's like, wait a minute. Why did I say that? <laughs> he says it out loud. Yeah, yeah. Miss looks at, like, after he's talking to Thomas, Miss, Miss looks over, Marlo does his thing, and I just go, 
ma'am, he's hot. And I'm like, oh, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. and he just gets a pluster and starts staring at the other girl. <laughs> just stare, trying to just find like a lady vampire. It's just like, uh, her, I meant her. Yeah, that, that's the one. Oh, <laughs> <definitely. laughs> it's so hard. The armor blushes. <laughs> armor blushes and immediately moves five feet oh. away from any of the guys in the group. <laughs> We're discovering things about ourselves today, like, folks. Oh, mm, mm. <laughs> and Dan, I don't know if I got that perception roll from you. It was a 24. <laughs> yeah. 24? <laughs> All right, you notice you notice right away the bozos standing by the bar. <laughs> Stand out like a sore thumb. <laughs> uh, can also just Marlo just hear me, just hear Miss yell, oh man, he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Marlo, you hear that, and you're the only person that could be for, obviously. Well, he also sees all of you trying and failing to resist it and says to himself, well, this feels a little nostalgic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he misses us. Mm, arguable. Yeah. But <laughs> he misses us, huge question mark. He misses the time before we <laughs> destroyed the world, I'm sure. He does find the players very interesting. It's just once that entertainment value became too actively hazardous <laughs> to the world around. He's like, oh no, I live in the world. <laughs> uh, Maverick, what do you do? So I think Maverick sees the tray in Jasper's hand, sees the manacles. Does Maverick notice that they have been noticed? Roll a perception. That is a 19. 19. Very subtly, after you recovered from the swoon, you see those red eyes make contact with your group. Okay, so Maverick is going to try to play it cool and is going to take a drink from the tray and pass, like, I don't know, like a silver to Jasper to try to play, play it off that they're just, you know, hanging around the bar. They're just patrons. It's fine. And turn their back to Marlo and they're going to say uh, under a hush breath, he knows we're onto them. We need to get those manacles to him and get out as fast as possible. But with only one entrance in and one entrance out, Jasper, I think you're the best bet to get close to him. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Immediately regretting this. <laughs> um, Jasper, roll a d20 for luck. Um, I actually didn't get to share my resist roll. Mm, what is it? I rolled a fireball, which is a nat 20 on one of my dice. Hey. Amazing. I would like to flavor it as him just taking a drink at the wrong time from Marlo. And the uh, charm just didn't, like, hit him. <laughs> he blacks out for, like, a second, and it's that exact second. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Brilliant. <laughs> but... He's, of course, always got a buzz and a, and a bit of drunkenness to him that he's always swaying. So it might look mm -hmm. like he's always swooning. <laughs> <laughs> That's my secret cap. Um, but do please roll a d20 for luck. Already. He's the perfect person. Untouchable. Uh, 13. I like the lucky number. That's pretty apt. Touchable. <laughs> <laughs> Touch me. Touch me harder. I retract my touchable. <laughs> <laughs> he does not come up to you, but you see a zombie with a couple of drinks uh, on a similar tray, slowly making their way back in the direction of the VIV area. And you're kind of putting it together that they're heading up to Marlo. This is going to uh, try and take a... <laughs> he goes up to the bar and orders the least strongest drink they have because this man cannot hold his liquor. <laughs> There's one called the Drowned Man. It's just water. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's just a cup of water with like a gummy bear at the bottom. Um, there we go. <laughs> I drink that. All right. I, call, I have a Drowned Man and I can't <laughs> You choke on the jummy, gummy bear? Jummy bear? <laughs> <laughs> the yummy, the, the gummy bear. All right. Unless Thomas wants to do anything, we will jump over to Jasper. Thomas is just going to put on his goggles of night because he's an artificer. I had to give him some stuff. Very cool. And they give him night or er, dark vision. They give him nightclub vision. Yeah. For flavor, they also look like an owl face. That's really he's cute. He's got like, <laughs> like an owl mask on, basically. It's really freaking cute. All right, Grayson, what is Jasper up to? What he's planning? What is he plotting? Because he's patroned so many bars, 
uh, he roughly knows how servers act. So he's going to be wandering around to some of the tables, picking up some of the glasses, looking for the ones that are still half full, and then just kind of like quick shotting them. <laughs> uh, roll a performance check with advantage. Hell yeah. I mean, Jasper is just amazing. <laughs> Another 20. Oh, yes. dang. Yes. Since Jasper is like constantly inebriated and he's kind of swaying and stepping, kind of staggering, he coincidentally is marching along just like the zombie waiters in the same kind of like, uh, in the same. Um, uh, right. <laughs> And all the zombie waiters are like, (laughs) (laughs) jumping back over to Jonathan, he is heading up the path back to Marlowe and Maledict's house. He has a little bit of panic setting in of, oh no, they haven't come back. It's been a lot of time. I need to check on them, make sure they're okay. They should be okay. Um, And as he's like in his head, sort of circling through these thoughts, Maledict, you're coming down the other way and you see this man approach you on the path. uh, And for a split second, he stops and makes eye contact with you. And I recognize him from my rat vision from the cold open. You absolutely do. Um, please roll insight. Nat 20. Yes. Yes. As you are looking at Jonathan and making eye contact with him, you see such fear overtake him. He is frozen in place and he is staring unblinkingly at you like an animal cornered as he sees a vampire standing before him in the sunlight, unopposed, looking unscathed after he sent seven of his people after him. What Maledict is going to do with that information, kind of reveling in it sadistically a little bit, he's going to do the horror movie hyperspeed thing, zipping right in front of Jonathan's face. Like a half a foot away from him, he will say to Jonathan, You need to tell your men to be better about heeding no trespassing signs. And through shaky, bated breath, he's going to say, Where are they? They trespassed. Trespass? I have a sign on my front door. It's not exactly a secret. They broke in to my house, started to burglarize my things, so I took defensive measures. Your house? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I know how that works. You, uh, you probably spent some time, right, kind of figuring out where you wanted to settle down, look for a nice place, two bedroom, two bath, good view, and oh, look, you found a nice little quaint town that you could terrorize, that you could enthrall, and that could be your own little toys, is that right? You made a nice little home there? That's a little more accurate to the person I used to be. I mostly just keep to myself these days. Right, right. Wait for people to come to you. Wait until it's more on your clock when you want to go and and slay whoever and drink their life force. Or you know what? Grab some minions, make them go do the dirty work for you. Is that right? What are you getting at? What I'm getting at is there's a town over there suffering. Suffering because of monsters like you. And there is a poor woman there trying to protect the people of this town. And somehow she is willing to put her life on the line for undead monsters like you. And what are you doing but sitting around in your house, drinking your blood, playing your games? And I bet, I bet when that house is torched up in flames... You're not even going to care, are you? That woman's going to die. That town's going to burn. And I bet you're just going to uproot and find somewhere else to go. A new place to terrorize. Is that right? It's a lot of assumptions you're jumping to. Am I wrong? To be determined. I knew it. Look, you can wait for this town to burn. Or 
You can do whatever you're going to do. But if I have anything to say about it, you're not going to be able to find a new, comfortable home. If I have anything to say about it, no one is going to have to suffer like I did at the hands of creatures like you anymore. I would slay you right here and now if I knew that you probably wouldn't kill me in the attempt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that town and I'm going to help the good people there. And we're going to get ready to fight back against the likes of you and push your damned undead out of this town. Is that clear? About as clear as a sign that says no trespassing. You think you're funny. No, that's my partner. Oh, your partner. Is that the, um, the other vampire that went walking through here? Went to some weird club? Thank you, that's the information I needed. Whoa. <laughs> and then he's going to leave. Jonathan's going to stop you and say, I'm not, I'm not done here. I don't know what you're planning, but you're not going to leave this spot. You see, I might be terrified of you. I might be terrified of vampires in general, but I tell you, I dined with death himself. I was stuck in his house for months and when I got out of there and when I finally broke free, I was still terrified of him. And even when I was still terrified of him, I was the one that took off his head. And with those words, he's going to use one of his channel divinities, Abjure Enemy. He's going to present a holy symbol and speak his prayer of denunciation to you. Uh, you must make a wisdom saving throw, and because you are an undead, you will do that at disadvantage. That is a 10. That will not succeed. So on a failed save, you are frightened for one minute or until you take any damage. Your speed is zero and you cannot benefit from any bonus to your speed. So you will be frozen in place for one minute. Look, I don't think you're going to have to worry about your... I don't know what he is to you, but you're not going to have to worry about him anymore. We'll take care of him for you. What are you planning? We're planning on getting rid of him and we're planning on helping the good Lady Amelia de Gonzola to enact her right of hollow and push all of you damn bastards out of this town. Is that as clear as a no trespassing sign? I don't know. Will it stop you from trespassing? You can't trespass where you belong. And he's gonna start galloping away. And per the Abjur, the extra planer, Maledict is going to stand there for one minute. And on that, we are going to switch back to the uh, vampire hunters in the nest. Yeah. Oh, I really well took me. that clown fiesta that happened in the house really seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Those guys were buffoons, but he really did care about them. We left off on Jasper getting close to the entry point where there are the two Revenant bodyguards guarding the VIV area. Um, and I'll hand it over to you. He's going to see the Revenants and place up his tray as if he's got the uh, drinks ready for the VIV and continue walking as if he owns the place, kind of, or he works here. Please roll a performance check or a deception check. I swear, the man cannot fail. It's an 18. Good. Sweet. I'll roll a pose okay. for them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a, a two on the die. Yay. <laughs> they see a shambling over. You look more like the zombies than the zombies in this place, and they clear the way for you. Sweet. Yeah, he's just got like a real thick mustache, and all they could really see is like his lower jaw, and it's just kind of like dribbling with like a little bit of like his bourbon that he's been sipping on every now and then. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. As you get past the revenants guarding the way, uh, we will jump over to Mist. What does Mist do? Well, Mist is going to do something very, very stupid. After taking the quote unquote liquid courage with absolutely no courage in there, he is going to try and rush Maledict and jump right up on top of him. 
Oh, oh okay. Paladin. I didn't All know right. Baladic was here. Uh, the Marlo. Damn uh, it. Dan, how tall is this balcony area that he needs to jump up onto? I would say probably about six feet. Good news is my athletics is a six. Yeah, Dang. I was going to have you roll athletics as you like run up and try and uh, jump up onto this thing. 13 on the die, but it's a plus six, so it's a 19. Oh, yeah. You're able to, like, get up there, clang, clang, hands on the railings, and you start to pull yourself over. Um, Marlo, you notice this clanging creature behind you. You don't quite notice the drunken foe zombie man coming your way. Uh, your attention is mainly on this metal man. Can I help you? I don't know, bloodsucker. Can you? And I brandish my one dagger uh, reverse uh, grip. Marlo is going to grin and say, just between you and me, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. <laughs> no. <laughs> if you hit me, you'll catch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> no! And I'm going to cast Flame Shield. Brilliant. Maverick is going to see Mist's rashness, curse under their breath, and uh, is, I think, going to hunker down, since there is only one way in, one way out, and turn around to Thomas, uh, grab his bag, uh. rip it off of him, <laughs> shake everything out of it. That's a lot. <laughs> get ready to hopefully catch <laughs> Mark Lowe. <laughs> Um, what are you looking for to no, catch No, 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 I, I just want the bag. All right, yeah. <laughs> just the I bag. Love it. And speaking of Thomas, it's your turn. Seeing two of my friends go and try to attack this very powerful vampire from both sides, uh, yeah, Thomas is going to rush forward as well. <laughs> just kind of start flailing around like, I thought we were supposed to keep this low key. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as you're shouting this, waving your hands or running through the club, the rest of the undead are going to kind of look at you and sort of focus in on this <laughs> flailing young man. <laughs> young man. <laughs> Question mark? Very small of stature. <laughs> yeah. Practically a boy. <laughs> yeah, underneath the giant backpack was a smaller backpack. <laughs> <laughs> and then we are jumping to Jasper. While Mist is distracting him, he's going to see that things are immediately going down. And he knows the overall plan, even though he's a drunk. But he's a functioning drunk. That's his secret. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have uh, 45 feet of movement and Marlo is exactly 45 feet away. And he has the manacles. And I would like to attempt a sleight of hand to throw them on uh, Marlo. Yes. Okay. So yes, Marlo, roll perception opposed. Uh, would you say that this was advantage because he's distracted or no? Uh, that is an 11 on the perception. I did my roll and it's already above 11. Then you got it. All right. Because uh, I got a 19 plus, I think, a three. Hey, what an Why are you asking for advantage? Oh. <laughs> no, no, because I, I didn't, guess it could have been a I didn't, I didn't look at the I didn't look at the roll first. <laughs> so sorry. It, it wasn't Jason wants the world. <laughs> <laughs> I want the world. I want the whole world. <laughs> Brilliant. Grayson's gonna save scum until he gets a 20. <laughs> yeah. Uh you're gonna clamp at least one manacle on his wrist, because I don't think he was casually having his hands together, but one manacle is all you need for him to not be able to mist away. Um, it is now <laughs> mist's turn. <laughs> so as he does his thing, it's like, well, I don't need to hit you up close. And I go like a few steps back and I bust out my crossbow. Uh, would it be fair to say that Thomas would have already improved their gear? Oh, uh, sure. It's not just a crossbow. It is a repeating shot crossbow. Good lord. Oh, you got a machine gun? Uh, it basically just gives it a bonus uh, plus one to attack and damage rolls. Very good. And you don't have to reload it. It just reloads by itself. Neat. Mist, you've readied your crossbow. It is a repeating shot crossbow. Is there anything else you'd like to do your turn? 
Um, besides pew pew pew, then yeah. Do you? Do you pew pew pew? I was yeah. I'm I'm aiming for his legs. Oh shit! Oh my god! Shit. Yeah, I want to pin Just him down. Really? <sighs> Fuck! All right, cool. <laughs> Let's go. All right, cool. <laughs> Get his feet. <laughs> Nail him to the ground. Essentially, yeah. Um, what's Barlow's AC again? Because I rolled a twelve. Uh, twelve's not gonna hit. His like helmet visor just doesn't give him the best. He's a stormtrooper essentially. He misses all the shots. It's a warning no. shot. It's a warning shot. Is warning what, shot. Warning shot. That. <laughs> After hearing the crossbow go off, the rest of the club is going to be like kind of startled and on edge. <laughs> yeah, especially after Thomas running in, like, wait, wait! <laughs> and all of them are kind of standing on guard, kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. And it's Marlo's turn. If you're okay with Marlo rolling an investigation to see if Jasper has the key to these manacles that he just slapped down on yeah, him. Yeah, I just took the manacles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I also don't know if we were given the key. <laughs> uh, Dan, roll a d20 for luck. Above a 12, Jasper has the key. Below a 12, the keys are on uh, Thomas. I rolled a 13. Oh, uh, she... <laughs> it's in my hat. <laughs> it's still attached to the other side of the manacles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Don't you guys want to win? You see the key uh, is on Jasper's person, not in the manacles. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay. So then for my action this turn, I am going to use my second of four charm charges to charm Jasper. So you will need to make a uh, wisdom saving throw, DC 17. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's below a 10. <laughs> good, good. Oh my God. So you are charmed by Marlo for 24 hours until or unless he dies or he causes you harm. Mm-hmm. Or if Marlo vampire charms another person. Or if Marlo vampire person. charms another person. He can only have one person charmed at a time. He can do that four times per rest. He has used two of them, so he's got two more of those in his back pocket. But anyway, having charmed you, he is now going to say, I think you've made a mistake. You should take these off of me and restrain your friend over there. Absolutely, governor. Who does he point to? Uh, The one actively attacking me. So missed. Ah, okay. Sounds good to me. All right. (laughs) It is uh, Maverick's turn. Um, I think with what's going on, I'm going to douse a little bit of the holy water that I have onto one of my arrows, and I'm going to take an attack. Heck yeah. And then does it sound fair with the arrow being coated in holy water that if it hits, it deals an additional D6 of acid damage? I think so. Um, That's going to be a 17. A 17 does hit. Yo. Nice. Sweet. Question though. I am charmed. I'm right next to him. And I do have deflect missile. It is not aimed at you. I think it has to be aimed at you. Okay. Because I just know that I'm charmed. Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking question. Very good question. I appreciate that. And you do need to protect me. It's just a matter of whether you can protect me from that particular hit. Right. So, Kendra, that'll be a D10 plus two, but also roll a D6 for your acid damage from the holy water. So that's uh, an 11 plus six. So that's a 17. Youch. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah, Maverick. Yeah, I'm not useless. I should have given you the repeating shot. <laughs> right. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. All right. Thomas. Let me ask, um, this key, is it currently visible? Um, yes, because that is the only way I believe Marlo would have been able to notice it. Does that sound fair, Dan? Yeah, sounds fair to me. Huzzah, because I have a little spell called catapult. (laughs) So I can catapult it away. (laughs) Interesting. Please read out catapult. It it does specify that uh, it is an object that isn't being carried or worn. So I don't know if that is going to affect it. Mm. That's why I was asking if it's... I think it is being carried and or worn. The vision that I have in my head is that Jasper is holding up the key. So are you trying to basically like snipe it out of his hand? 
Yeah, just like uh, launch it out from between his fingers, basically. Read catapult again. Choose one object weighing one to five pounds within range that isn't being worn or carried. The object flies in a straight line up to 90 feet in a direction you choose before falling to the ground, stopping early if it impacts a solid surface. Gotcha. How I would rule this then, the object that you catapult has to be something that is not on someone's person. So you could not catapult the key. Right. You could catapult something into the key to try to knock it out of his hand, but the key itself could not be the thing that is catapulted. Right. So anything on like these tables or cups or... <laughs> well, um... I guess it's really my only option here because I don't really want to attack because all of my attacks do too much damage. I don't want to hurt my friends. <laughs> um, You're so kind. Sometimes sacrifices must be made. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and cast Magic Missile because those can't miss. Right. Oh. <laughs> so, Thomas... Seeing that everything is just going to go down and thinking, oh, I need to save my friends, is going to hold up his arm and a little automaton, like wooden and elastic automaton, is just going to perk up behind his shoulder, run across his arm onto his hand, and then a three-tube <laughs> missile launcher pops up from atop its head and it's going to fire off three little missiles. And one of them is going to hit the key and then I'll hit Marlo twice. There we go. Very good. All right. Okay. How much damage am I taking? Uh, nine damage. And then if you care if the key takes damage, it takes three damage. Three damage. Okay. What is your spell save DC? Do you have that on your sheet? Uh, 14. 14. Jasper, can you roll a strength check to see if you're able to hold on to the key or if because of the splash of magic missile, you let it go? Uh, flat. Oh, my God. It's a fucking 20. <laughs> oh, my God. I picked the right person to charm. Yeah. <laughs> he can't be this good. I didn't make him to be this good. <laughs> <laughs> He's blacked out. The dice you you the can't story. control him. No. But uh, yeah, the little automaton on uh, on his wrist is going to go and then just explode into little bits and pieces. Aww. After successfully uh, doing what it was supposed to. And then Tails is going to uh, open up his... Uh, <laughs> Tails. Thomas is going to open up his hand. <laughs> uh, and there's a little gem on the palm of his hand. Uh, it's going to glow and then shoot a bolt of electricity. Oh. And I, I'm also going to target that key. Gosh dang it. Hey. Oh, is this lightning lure? No, this is from his infiltrator armor, a lightning launcher. Oh. oh. What does that do? Launch is lightning. Yeah, it, it's essentially just uh, an electric-based like crossbow attack. Essentially, all right. It does a lot more than that, but for our, for our, purposes. For our intents and purposes, that's what it is basically. Let's break that key. Right? How much HP should a key have? Uh oh. Uh, I rolled a twenty-four to hit. Oh, a well, uh, hit. Yeah. Uh, this is gonna do a lot of damage. Uh, <laughs> okay, you're just aiming for the key, so just right? Just the key, yes. Just the key. Uh, roll damage. <laughs> If you get over a 10, the key will melt. Okay. Does 10 damage exactly. Jasper, in your hand, uh, you can see the key bends ever so slightly. It's just the heat of the electricity goes through it. This is why I wanted catapult to work. I'm <laughs> sorry. This is a good thing, though. If he's actually a good guy, I don't want to trap him forever. <laughs> you can't trust these bloodsuckers. All right. Well, on that note, we'll jump over to Jasper. So as all that is going down, Marlo is going to say, well, never mind. Just protect me, please. Well, I've got a question for that. Uh, do you want to get out of here or do you want to just uh, fight all these peeps? Peeps? <laughs> uh, if you can get me out of here, I think that would be more efficient. Excellent choice, sir. He's going to pick up Marlo, oh, oh, oh. as long as Marlo is willing. 
he will go along with it. Okay. How, how do you pick up Marlo? Princess Carrie. Uh, yes. Princess Carrie, piggyback. You would want it to be a Princess Carrie, but Jasper is more of a gruff drunk. So he's just going to pick him up and. Over the shoulder? Over the shoulder. Yeah. So is it like a fireman carry? <laughs> yeah, just throws him over the shoulder, slaps him on the ass. Yeah! And then, yeah. Uh, I'm going to burn a key point. All right, you use a key point. What are you doing? I'm doing Step of the Wind. Spend one key point to take the disengage or dash action and jump distance is doubled for your turn. Ooh, sweet. So, uh, yeah, he basically runs out of the building with uh, with Marlo. <laughs> wow, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, no. No. Please describe uh, how you deftly exit this building. We run down the stage and Jasper being actively always drunk, he makes it seem as if he's dancing on the stage and then all of a sudden just does a backflip while still holding Marlo. Uh, I'm gonna make you do some rolls for this. <laughs> That's totally fine. And then he'll go ahead and uh, continue running around and then do a, a spin to avoid one of the waiters and eventually get to the door. All right, do uh, both a performance and an athletics check. Got you. All right, Jasper. This is the time to look as dumb as possible, please. Not be the superhero we all. <laughs> I knew I should have given you bardic inspiration. Oh no. Oh no. I rolled two 16s. Oh, wah, wah. <laughs> womp, womp. Marlo, you're still being thrown around to hell, but <laughs> this very strange drunken man is able to carry you out of the building in six seconds. And Marlo <laughs> is going to coyly grin, and then do a little finger waggle wave <laughs> at all of the vampire hunters. <laughs> oh my god. God damn this it. so dumb. And Thomas is like, I thought I was fast. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of impressed, but also after him. <laughs> Uh, so Jasper and Marlo have uh, quite quickly exited the building. Um, I imagine the rest of you are going to follow behind. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah as Jasper exits out with Marlo, the nightclub that we're very scared up front, once he has left the building, kind of settle and have a sigh of relief as they won't have to work for four days straight again. Ah. They cheer as soon as Marlo's out of the building. <laughs> we can go home! <laughs> well, we're outside. Uh, where do you want to go? Away from them. Any particular direction? <laughs> if you can take me back behind a building somewhere, I can handle the rest. Excellent choice, sir. Uh, and uh, uh, I guess we'll head behind this building over here. I love that he's slowly becoming a butler. I know. I didn't mean for it to be, but uh, sure. Meant to be. All right. Uh, Miss, it's your turn as this mad lad is running away. All right. So I'm going to go over there and I'm going to try <laughs> and shoot Jasper. Oh. Oh. All right. Go ahead. That is a uh, 17. Uh, that does hit, but I am using Deflect Missile. Hell yeah! I don't know if you would have had a chance to put down Marlo. Has he been plopped on the floor? I have not been plopped on you the floor. You can deflect it with Marlo. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I just gotta burn a key point. Oh, come on! Ah! Deflect missiles, when hit by a ranged attack, reduce the damage by what? Uh, that's going to vary by level. Uh, if you reduce the damage to zero, you catch the missile and can use it in a ranged attack in return. If you have a free hand and it's small enough to hold. Uh, okay. So you can, uh, like, absorb the damage and not take it. But I would say with Marlo on your back, fireman carry, plate of drinks in hand, <laughs> there will no be uh, no redirecting this time. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, so you're not letting him catch it with his toesies? With my teeth. <laughs> yeah, because damage is a D8, which is a 7. All right. Are you able to absorb 7? Uh, it says a D10 plus 9. I rolled a 4, so that's 13. All right. Yes, you are able to absorb that damage, and you take no damage. So he hears the clang, 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 <laughs> <laughs> and then turns around behind him and sees the, the bolt coming right at him, catches it. Oh, terribly sorry, sir. This one followed us. Well, good news is I get two attacks, so I'm going to shoot him again. Hey! 
14 to hit? Nope, does not hit. My armor class is 15. Damn it. Yeah, he just steps to the side and watches it go flying off to the side. <laughs> and Weeble wobbles. Um, I'm going to take my action surge then. Oh, sweet. Oh, no. <laughs> the dice hate me. I just rolled a four. Oh, uh, little man. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to shoot you. Stop dodging them. We need that vampire down, dude. <laughs> Off in the distance, you start to hear hooves, and they're getting closer and closer and closer. And you turn to look down in the direction that you're hearing these hooves, and you see this man with like a frantic, scared look on his face, but he has a lance in his hand charging after you. And you can see it's starting to swirl with this like fiery, bright, radiant light. And you could probably assume it's coming right for your head. Can I have you make in this quick second an insight roll? Absolutely. 13. You're looking at this guy and you're like, oh shit, that's gonna hurt. As he's coming at me, I hesitantly pull out my rapier, look down at Jasper and think, this is a very lopsided joust. <laughs> is there something you would like me to do, sir? Probably dodge. <laughs> very well, sir. And as you say that to your dear longtime friend and ally, Jasper, who you met maybe 10 minutes ago, uh, you see this lance come for you, and I am going to roll to hit. Um, does a 26 hit? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. No. Do your worst. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Miss is yelling over to Jasper. is like, push him in the way. Push him in the way. <laughs> that is for pure melee alone. That is going to be seven plus branding smite. Which radiant damage will auto crit. <gasps> well, the radiant is... 11, Whoa. so that will be 22 from Pure Radiant. Oh, that's a big oof there, buddy. And when this makes contact with you, Marlo, it thunks right into your chest. This wasn't a killing blow. This wasn't meant to kill you even from the intentions of this frantic man. This was a put me at a third of my health blow. Ooh. Ooh. But he is intending to Sweet undead Jesus. <laughs> knock you down in an attempt to incapacitate you. Mechanically, this won't affect anything, but I choose to believe that I was not set down yet, and this knocks me off the <laughs> shoulders of Jasper. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, like a lopsided joust. <laughs> I did not know that's what you meant. That was hilarious. But yes, Marlo, you feel that thunk into your rib cage and knock you down colliding with the dirt below. Oh. <laughs> Being surrounded in the sunlight after that hit on the ground with some dimensional shackles on his wrist, Marlo is going to slowly get back up, hands above his head, and say, all right, whatever it is you want, I'll go quietly. All right, then. I'm glad you're being reasonable. It's a rarity for me, but I know when I'm... <laughs> it, it, fighting back is kind of futile at this point. Mist, blindfold him. You got it. We're going to have a little chat in the woods. Is that really necessary? You just told me where you're taking me. Well, you don't know where exactly in the woods, so there. I live in these woods. I'll be able to figure it out with con... <laughs> <laughs> Can I stab him now? Wait, I have some information I want to get out of him first. But stabbing him. Trust me, there will be plenty of time for stabbing later. Right now, I've got some important information I need, but feel free to drag him along. Don't worry. As I put the blindfold on him, I'll be as gently as I, like, squeeze the blindfold as hard as I can, as I can. And just as rough as humanly possible, drag Mal drag, Mar drag Marlo through the woods. I said Maledict earlier. I met Marlo. God damn it. Why did both these characters start with an M? Because <laughs> it's cute. It's great for monogram towels. Can I make a nature check if there are any rodents within 120 feet? Yeah, absolutely. Sick. Oh. Uh, you want 
You want I should follow, sir? Jasper, you've been through a lot. How about you, uh, take about 20 minutes? Go take a break. Terribly sorry, but I wasn't talking to you. Go take a break, Jasper, for about 20 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Very good, sir. (laughs) Also, that was a 19 on that nature check. Absolutely. Yeah, there's this place infested. So many rats everywhere. Uh, I'm going to use the message cantrip to communicate with a rat to ferry a message to Maledict. I love that! That's so good! Mm -hmm. Uh, And as you're being dragged into the woods, Jonathan is going to lean down to you, Marlo, and say, Hey, if you know it's good for you, you'll let him go. Oh, you're talking about the drunk man. Yeah, fine, whatever. Uh, I will end the hypnosis on Jasper. Yay, if we... So right when the hypnosis ends, Mist just bonks him on the side of the head. Oh. All right. Who wants to fight? Let's do it. Oh, hey, sweet. It worked. <laughs> uh, but the message that I will send to the rats is basically keep an eye on where they take me and relay that information to Maledict. You absolutely do that. Um, and then we see Marlo and this group of vampire hunters just walking into the woods. We are the outcasts, the spits you might say. We deal with the nightmares that you run away from every single day. We know the world is a gruesome little place. But us outsiders, we've developed quite a taste for the grisly and morbid, the ghastly and the horrid. We know it's awful, dreadful, but we like it. Just another haunted night, shrouded with unearthly fright. So when you're oh so terrified, you know who to call. The world is falling apart, we'll never take it to heart. So monsters and creatures and spirits and specters and all, let's all have a ball. Yeah, just throws him over the shoulder. Slaps him on the ass. Yeah! Then, yeah. Uh, I'm going to burn a key do point. you take fire damage? I mean, it wasn't meant to do damage. It was when just you kind hit of like... me, you catch on fire. Flurry of blows. <laughs> Flurry of blows on the ass. All right, you use a key point. What are you doing? Time and place, my guy. <laughs>